And I want to talk about freedom and why it's so important to you. Everyone needs to make money in order to support themselves, their family, their future goals. And the, the line that's always used in corporate America is profit. You know, we're all bottom line, driven by profit, making money. Freedom is everything. And the reason we don't have freedom is because we box ourselves in all the time. Not consciously, but we draw lines everywhere we go. We set boundaries for ourselves. There have been lines in our heads for a long time. And our next guest speaker, Elaine Howley, understands that you can go way beyond if you don't set limits for yourself. My parents got me into swim lessons when I was about a year and a half old, and you can tell that's me. I still got the same belly. I just barely made the team, and I was there because the coach saw that I was a good workhorse and that I would keep the underclassmen in line during workouts and stuff. I was not a point getter. Uh, I would compete, but I would always be dead last, and I was more of like a team player. Growing up in the, the 80s, seeing all of these you know, bronzed and lovely men on the stands, I, it was rare that there was a, a woman up there. So it had never really occurred to me that that was something that maybe I could pursue. It was great fun and I had great friends and won a lot of medals and competitions and stuff. And so it was sort of like this new horizon started to open up to me in the ocean. This is where I got my first taste of open water swimming. Um, I actually did my first marathon swim. I didn't even have the terminology for it yet. I didn't know that there was a thing called marathon swimming then. But one day, um, my friend Bill and I went out and I was gonna try and swim the length of the island, Long Beach Island in New Jersey. It's 18 miles long. I mean, that's definitely a marathon swim. I had no business doing this. I didn't, didn't know anything about what I was doing, but we went and we tried and I got about 12 miles before I couldn't, couldn't deal with the sea lice anymore. So 10K still isn't quite long enough, but once we get over 20 miles, that's when things start to get interesting. And the way they do it, you take a boat away from mainland out to the boat to start at midnight. So you jump off the back of a perfectly good boat into the middle of the Pacific in the dark. And it is terrifying. <laughs> I'm not sure when I've ever been that terrified in my life before. I, this, is, this is the problem though. You can only get so close to you know, Doctor's Cove up here because the boat's got a draft and the shallow water comes up and you know, so the boat's gotta wait like 50 yards offshore. So I get in the water, I start swimming and within about 20 minutes I realize that every time I put my hand in I'm getting what feel, looks like stars coming back at me. Like, Star Wars, the warp speed thing with the yeah, bioluminescence. There were little critters, in the, little tiny bits of things in the water that were lighting up when I would disturb them. And it was just mesmerizing. And in that moment, I was like, this is really cool. This is something you would never see inside the concrete box of the pool, ever. So I'm successful with Catalina, and this is really awesome, but what's next? There's this thing called the Triple Crown. I was successful in all three of those, but then that ever-loving question, the back of your mind is, what next? I've just achieved all of this great stuff that I really wanted to do. But then, yeah, again, still, even after that, there is the question of, what next? It all started with doing an ice mile, which I did in Boston Harbor in December of 2012 with my friend Jerome. Uh, we were both su successful in that, and actually I, it, it's like weird and totally obscure, but I'm kind of proud of it in this strange way that my ice mile time is the fastest time for a female, or actually any swimmer in the Boston area. There's, there's about 10 of us now who've done ice miles here, and my, my time is still the fastest. So. I don't know why, it just is. There's seven steps that I've identified for moving beyond the box, and we're gonna go through each one of these in turn here. Um, so the first one is setting the right challenge. Is this goal that you've got, is it something that you want, or is it something that society is telling you you should want? So think about what you value, think about what's important to you, you know, and think about is this going to make you happier, is it gonna make you better, does it matter? Once you've settled on what you're your plan is gonna be, write a plan. Break it up into smaller chunks. If you're trying to, to make X amount of dollars by the end of the year, how can you make that into like monthly goals or even bi-weekly goals? See who else is out there. See who else has goals that are aligned with yours? You know, that you can maybe, you know, work together. Maybe you can help each other. 
How are you going to adapt? How are you going to, you know, work around these obstacles that, that crop up? At the same time though, you don't want to give yourself too much easy pass. Sometimes you have to hang in there and just fight through the hard stuff. Each time you do that, you're going to recommit to your goal. And you have to also be ready to accept that sometimes you're going to fail. You have to retain your sense of humor. That, that is so critical because at the end of the day, if you're taking yourself too seriously, it all falls apart. And really, at the end of the day, you have to do the work. For any big goal, anything that's worth having, you've got to work for. But, you know, if you do the work, you're going to be ready when the time comes. Even if it's incremental pieces along the way, like I got through some meeting or, you know, I landed a new client or I listed a new house that's, uh, you know, I'm excited about having grabbed. Those little, those little celebrations along the way can really help you recommit to your goal and stay on track. Do you remember when you were younger and you would try new things? Do you know that 95% of people still listen to music they were listening to by the time they were 28? They stopped listening to new music. You have your comfort zone and where the magic happens. Elaine didn't even know that marathon swimming and ice swimming existed. And she was a collegiate swimmer. I want you now to think and commit, to think outside your box, to jump over the lines, to ignore those invisible barriers that you have and do whatever you want.